Well, happy to see y'all back. We're going to tune up my second uh, floor time that came in. It came in Wednesday, and I opened it up in the afternoon, and I was like, it has no legs. <laughs> so naturally, I was freaked out a little bit. But it was no big deal. I contacted the uh, the guy where I bought it, and uh, he said, "Oh yeah, no big deal." Well, it wasn't any big deal for me, but he was like freaked out. He says, "Oh my gosh, it's sitting right here." He says, "All three legs." He said he sent his new uh, new worker to pull the drum because it had come in. And uh, he didn't think to check to make sure the legs were there, so I got the legs today. Very nice gentleman. We're going to tune this new one. And I'm on the resonant head right now. The other floor tom is that uh, 75, and so I'm going to make this up close to 78 to 80. I'm going to probably put it at 79, um, and I want my bottom just a little bit tighter, so we're going to go, I think what I'm going to do is go a probably 70 nine on bottom and 78 on top we'll see how they sound when i get going here i don't know if y'all can see that but you all see that no of course not come on don what do you think there they got supervision <laughs> Supervision. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. That's that was a funny. Wasn't too funny, but hey. I like this drum dial because I can tap the drum. You can hear what it sounds like. And get it in tune with itself and I always uh, do a star shape across and across so see if you go over here not the same and bring it up and get all the wrinkles out Got to do that first. Now you can go without a, uh, a resonant on it if you want to. Now you can do it at uh, concerts. And And then I'm going to tune them to, uh, whoa. And let's see what we get now. 
We're at 78. What did I say I wanted? Did I say I wanted to do it at about 78? I can go up to 80. Maybe. A lot of times I'll do this whole thing by ear. Before I play. Sometimes you don't have time to fool around with the drum dial, even though it will get it in tune completely. And I've got everything tightened up a little bit. to the store a while ago and saw a guy jump the curb. I didn't see it happen, but he jumped the curb and uh, ran into the wall at the supermarket. How that happened, that's beyond me. Okay, let's start getting these across here. Okay, we're going to go over to this one, 79, we're at 79 there, we're at 80 here, so You know, it shows a 79.5. Just a quarter of a turn will usually put it right on. That's why I carry a couple of drum keys.
That one's got a 76. Okay, that one's got a 79. Believe it or not, I've got a whole lot of uh, drum keys. That's an 80. Let's drop it down a little. Now you don't want to seventy nine point five. You don't want to smash your or crush your resident head because it's not as strong as the as a batter head. You don't have to be as meticulous as I am. But my hearing is very good. And when I notice that something's off a little bit, it bothers me. We were close. Bring this up to the man. Seventy nine. Seventy nine. We're seventy nine all the way around. Seventy nine, seventy nine, seventy nine. Okay. Now we're gonna spin her around. And we've got to stop for a second because I need to find the other hardware for it. Hmm. I will be right back with you guys. And we'll put on the batter head. Okay, we're back again. You time us. Air conditioner off so y'all can hear me. And we're going to replace our foot and we're going to add the new drum uh, head, which, of course, if you followed me along, you notice, you know, I like the Evans G2. Um, They're powder coated, 
and they last. They're double uh, double thickness, and they last a lot longer. I've already gone through one head. And always, always save your extra head. That's right. Okay. Also, if you remember. I always uh, put the I always put the uh, label with the uh, label for my uh, drums. That looks about right. And right now, this is always the fun part. You know, if you got a little kid, start them out young. Have them put these in. Especially if they're little, because they're not going to hurt that tension rod. Trust me on that. They're not going to get it so tight that it messes up something. Well, depends on how. <laughs> then again, I take that back. It depends on how uh, how old your little kid is. I try to get these. Finger tight. And put the lock washer on the tension rod. Now, now we've got them in. Tighten them in just a little bit. Now, since all of y'all are here, I hope you're going to be able to see this, what I'm going to do. Maybe that flood will be good enough. I'm going to put this on the floor now. I'm going to put my weight on it. Not all my weight. Now I'm going to give it some turns to tighten it up. And 
if you notice I'm going in a star pattern. You're gonna hear it crackling. And that's normal. A lot of people don't know this and they what'll happen is they'll get on their drums and this and this drum will all of a sudden become out of tune. And they don't understand why. And that is all because the drum head is stretched. Now you see? Just a little bit in there. We're okay now. Now. Now we're going to swing back up. We're going to try to get it in tune with itself first, a little bit better. at 79.5. Now, on drum, head, drum uh, the batter head and the resonant head, resonant head, there's three ways you can do it. You can tune it lower, or you can put, tune it in tune with the batter head, or you can tune it higher. And, uh, and right now, I'm going to tune it. Actually, I think I'm going to go um, balance at 79. And there's a reason I'm doing this is because the other one is that set at 78. And I will probably change it while I'm playing. Okay. This one's at 80. Let's bring it down to 79. My object is to get the tones a quarter off, so I will actually probably uh, do some work with the other one. Um, The other one I've had for four or five months now. And so it needs to be stretched again.
the 78.5. Well, the turn should bring it up to uh, 79. 79, let's go across. Now I've got a drum bot also, which will give you exact pitches, but I rarely use it. Now, see, I'm having a problem getting this one at 79, and I've got a feeling it's just not stretched enough. We're going to do it just a little bitty bit. There we go. I think we're okay now. Not quite. Yep. Okay. From it, and we're at 79 there. 79.5. 78. 79. Seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Go across. Seventy-nine, seventy-nine. Seventy-nine point five. I need to come down just a little bit. Got a quarter turn. Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine. Okay. We're at seventy-nine. Okay, 78, so we need to come up one, a little bit. Yeah, 
Now, a lot of people will tune these back what they want as far as what kind of music they're going to be playing and so forth. But I think we're And there you have it. And Pearl was nice enough to send extra parts. And this drum, it sounds like. part if I get to put the legs on it the newly arrived legs now I should do another video on this because you can actually uh, turn the legs inwards or outwards and change the tune the tone of the drum. I don't know if you are aware of that, but yes, yes you can. And I was happy if those legs came in today because the big box over there that they came in, or not that they came in, but that the drum came in, I've got use for it. My important papers drawer in my desk is full. I'm going to have to use that box. You know, when I went down, uh, after I was totally disabled, <laughs> you see on, on TV these uh, companies that will support you and, and uh, no cost up front, you know, and, and they want to, uh, they want to help you get your, uh, disability claim and so forth but see I've got five herniated discs in my lower back my S1 is mush and I've got five herniated discs in my neck but three of them have been replaced and uh, eventually I will have to have the cage in my neck replaced because the disc above and below the cage is starting to give out and uh, they'll put a larger cage in and probably put more bone grafts in there and uh, when they do that then I will not have much movement in my neck and if they do put a cage in my lower back then I won't be able to turn from side to side and so that's kind of like what we're waiting on right now is where I can't stand the pain anymore um, and I literally I've seen 19 doctors when I go into their office and they pop the x-rays and MRIs up you can watch their mouth just drop open and they look at me and say, how are you walking? And I always say, one foot in front of the other. And they says, no, you shouldn't be able to even walk. You should be in excruciating pain. And I am. I, I live at a pain level of a seven. So if I say I'm in pain, really bad pain, that's a pain level of about a 20. Most people would be screaming at. But this happened back in uh, 2006. And I've been dealing with it since. You know, and uh, I have some good days. I have some that where I have no pain, which is very rarely. You know, I may get a two or three days where I'm not in any pain. You know, the thing is, is I can turn wrong in my sleep and wake up and hardly even be able to get out of bed. 
Um, but when I went down to uh, the Social Security, I was told by uh, some lawyers out of Texas, since it was a federal case, no, there's no uh, lawyers that do federal work up here where I'm at. And so I was going through lawyers in Texas, and they says, take all your paperwork and go down to uh, the Social Security with it. <laughs> and I walked into the Social Security. Man, their security's gotten tight. They got an armed guard, and he goes through, and he's going to search everything, and he opens it. You know, and I've got one of those, uh, uh, like a suitcase, like a pilot carries, you know, on wheels and stuff. And I bring it in there, and he starts to open it up and starts to dig around. I says, if you get those papers out of order, you're going to spend the rest of your day putting them back together. And he started laughing at me, and I said, I'm not laughing. And we're talking a stack of paper about close to three foot high, literally. And and he, he could tell that, you know, I was definitely injured. And... Uh, and we had a lady where that worked at uh, where I worked who was, you know, the uh, OWCP lady, workman's comp lady. And I wasn't even trying to claim workman's comp, but uh, I guess a lot of people fake it. And my doctor called her and he says, you know, because she told me, oh, you can come to work. And this is no kidding. She said this, you can come to work, Don. And uh, take your medication while you're at work, and then it'll be worn off by the time you get ready to go home. So my doctor called her and he says, "Lady, did you tell my patient that?" She says, "Yeah." He says, "You're practicing medicine without a license." He says, "You're going to have someone that's a nurse high themselves passing out medication to other patients." He says, "You're looking for a huge lawsuit." He says, "Now leave him alone." He says. MRIs and x-rays do not lie, which I agree, they don't. I'd like to see someone try to fake one of them, but anyway, I went into uh, the Social Security, and after I made it through their guard and everything, I went to, uh, to, to the open desk, because they called my name after I sat down. And uh, I walked up there, and she says, do you have your paperwork? And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And she says, okay, can you slide it through the window? And I says, no, ma'am. And she says, why? And I backed up. And I says, this is it. And she goes, oh, my word. And she says, I'll come around and get it. So she came around. You know, she unlocked the, the secure doorway, and she came around. And she says, can I use your cart here? to?" Yes, ma'am. And she took it, and... Uh, and she uh, made copies of it and brought everything back out to me. And uh, <laughs> and she gave it to me. And it was probably, I'd seen a bunch of doctors by that time. And they all said the same thing. You know, you can't work, but we're not going to, uh, there's no way that you can work, that's for sure. And one doctor told me, he says, you know, he says, you could probably retire. He says, which I'm thinking about throwing you on immediately retirement. And he says, you might be able to go to work for a library, but don't pick up any books. <laughs> and I'm like, that doesn't help. You know, because people are all the time bringing back books and stuff. And, and me climbing up high on, no, nah, that's, so that didn't work out. But I didn't try that. He was laughing. He was joking with me. Um. But he was a physical medicine doctor, so he could actually tell, you know, where I was injured and everything. And uh, it was within two weeks, Social Security called me. And they said, uh, they said, we've approved your uh, Social Security automatically. And uh, then she says, and your son's going to get some, uh, your son's going to get some payments because of you and your present employer is not paying you what they should have been paying you so you're getting some back pay on that also and i was like okay 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 i wasn't arguing 
you know, and because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people. Actually, I know there's a lot of people that fake it, but there's no way that you know you can fake the MRIs and X-rays. And I went down to the doctor uh, down in Tucson that did my neck surgery, and uh, he looked at my. He says, holy cow, boss, what did you do? And I says, oh, I was moving a patient. And I says, I was doing it right. And he's like, yeah, he says, but you're, he says, your S1 is mush. And he says, uh, he says There's, you can't go back to work like this. No way. And when I first got injured, I thought it'd be a simple operation like they did for my neck. And my neck was only supposed to take an hour and a half, and it's supposed to be one disc. And when they got in there, uh, my wife and her mother were waiting in the waiting room, and that one and a half hours became four hours, and they started getting worried, and they went up there. And uh, so MRIs don't show everything, because once they got in, they thought I only had one herniated disc. And then they found out I had five, and the ones poking on my spine and uh, so they had to pull those out piece by piece and put donor bones in a, in a cage in me. But anyway, my all the time my uh, important papers are building up and building up. So I'm going to use that big box and take the ones out of my desk and put them in that box and label them important papers because it's a nice size box and it'll. Uh, I can put in half at it, you know, half, or I can fill it up halfway, and then I can go another year and fill it up the rest of the way. <laughs> I know you are tired of hearing me jabber, but yeah, that's uh. Let's go ahead and put these legs on here. Yeah, I really appreciate the guy who, uh, I'm going to even put this one a little bit lower than the other one, I think. The guy that I ordered this from, he was real apologetic, you know. It was okay. He said it was his fault, but at least he didn't do what I did. I went to the store the other day and took a, uh, I can't remember why I was going to the store, but I had to buy some condiments or something like that for, because uh, I'm getting ready to cook that brisket. And uh, I went and got the condiments and came home and got out of my car, started talking to a neighbor. Oh, and I, I got a bag of ice, and I wasn't paying any attention at all. And then I came upstairs. And after about two hours, I'm like, what am I forgetting? And then I, all of a sudden it dawned on me. Oh, man, I've got ice. <laughs> and I did. And the ice was half melted. Okay. Okay. Now then, I'll take you out to see what I just did. My little bitty room here. And I see that I've got my 
new one even. That's just how I put it automatically. I'm going to have to drop it down a little bit more. And that's how you change, how you add a, a new drum head. And so I think I've got it pretty much. Uh, you can see my, my drum dial literature over there. This is my, uh, used to be my son's room. And now he's outgrown it. And I was asked how come I, how many uh, complaints have I had about my drums. And I've got a set of sound offs I put on my drums. But all the gray that you see are boxes of papers. And you figure from 2006 until 21, a lot of papers, but they drowned out a lot of the sound from my drums. I mean, I could get in here and just go crazy. And, but the neighbors uh, actually says, I asked them if I was bothering them one time, and they're like, no, you actually play pretty good. We were surprised. I was like, okay, thank you. And he says, knock it out. And I'm like, okay. And he says, you can sing if you want to. I says, uh-uh. I can't afford buying glass for you people. <laughs> you know, I don't want to shatter any glasses or anything or any mirrors. That's one thing I can't do is sing. Anyway, so y'all see how that goes, how this went. And it didn't take that long. So if it helps out someone, y'all be sure and give me a thumbs up and a like. If you got any questions, ask me. Um, like I said, I'm I'm going to tune uh, the two, since they're the same size, two 16-inch uh, floor toms. I'm going to um, try to get them a quarter of a pitch apart, which I can do. And uh, hopefully this helps someone out. Uh, the last time I showed doing the whole set from start to finish, there were some people who, a lot of people commented, and uh, one young man said his father was a Marine also, and uh, he said this helped him because his drum kept getting out of tune. And now he knows why. So, anyway, if you are in a warm place, go swimming. If you're in a cold place, snuggle up, because there is some cold places still. I don't understand it, but hey, you know, uh, I've got a friend that lives in Alaska, and she's always wearing heavy coats and stuff. You guys probably saw her on uh, um, Bering Sea Gold, uh, Shauna Echohawk. And yeah, she, uh, <laughs> you see her wearing coats and everything right now. So it's still cool out there um, where she lives. So anyway, if you're uh, if you're in a warm place, go swimming while you can. If you're in a cold place, snuggle up and stay warm, and y'all be safe. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.